Hey, what's up, guys? This is Nick with uh, Indie Oogle, and uh, today I will be teaching you more about programming instead of uh, drag and drop, which we did in the previous tutorial of mine. This is going to be a little bit more advanced, so uh, hopefully you took my advice and experimented a little bit, maybe went to the Game Maker community, or looked in the help file, because if you did, this it all will help you out a lot when I start explaining this. So, let's do just like we did last time and add in my sprite. And I'm not going to name it or anything, just because it's a tutorial. So, <clears throat> now we have this again. Let's go ahead and add in event and create. Now, if you've um, ever read about programming or you went to the GMC or looked in the manual or anything like that, you've probably heard about variables. Variables are very, very important to programming games or pretty much anything for that matter. So what we want to do is we want to create a variable for a walking speed and a variable for running speed. Okay, so when you have your create event here, we're going to go down to this control tab. Click that and you have your code here. Let's drag this one and drop it here. Now you have your text editor here to create GML. So basically, since I just want to create a walking speed and a running speed, it's very simple. You just name your variable and then you set a value to it. This will all make sense by the end of the tutorial. So right now, I'll just type in W speed. Okay, now add a space equals and set it to. Uh, two and then you don't have to add this in but I like to add it in so add in a, a semicolon there you know now skip down a line and add in R speed equals five so what this is is a I set up a variable for walking speed and set it to two and I set up a variable for running speed and set that to five so click OK there and you have your two basic variables set up already. You don't have to top in anything else that sets up your variables. So add in another event and uh, keyboard left. Okay, now let's add in some more code. This is going to be basically the same thing we did in our last tutorial, but it's going to be in GML and there's going to be a little bit extra added in. So let's set it to. Um, if and then parentheses uh, keyboard check and then parentheses VK space uh, space there we go and then add in two parentheses since we've got two opening parentheses there and now skip down a line and add in this little uh, curly bracket or whatever you call it and I like to hit tab here to skip out a, a good little ways there and type in um, x minus equals uh, r speed semicolon closing curly bracket now what this does is it checks when you press down the left key it goes into this little code and it checks if you are uh, holding down uh, space or you can even uh, you know change this to shift if you would prefer to have that if you're holding down shift then the X is uh, minus by the running speed which allows you to move left by the running speed so top in else opening curly bracket tab X minus equals W speed for walking speed now you have your basic uh, code set up now the only thing left to do is to duplicate this. Duplicate, keyboard, right, and open this up and change this to plus, and change this to plus. Okay, now duplicate again, keyboard, up, now change this to y minus and y minus. 
there we go. Now keyboard down. And Y plus and Y plus. Okay. So to go over this one more time just in case you don't fully understand it, we set up two variables, walking speed equals two and running speed equals five. So when you press down a key, say the left key, then you want it want the character to move left. But he if it checks if you were holding down the shift key, then he moves at the running speed that you set up earlier. Or if you're not holding down shift, he uh, moves at the walking speed. And that's the same thing for all of these. It just checks if you're holding down shift, then it'll uh, you'll move faster than you normally would, basically. So create a room here and setting somewhere, say here. Click OK and test your game. Okay, now you see he's moving very slow. So let's hold down shift and he moves faster. Let go of shift and he goes back to slow. So this is very good if you want to uh, allow your character to run. Now variables can be set to anything, uh, any kind of number, like an integer variable like these are, it can be set to a number. So they are very useful. You even use variables for health and um, maybe you want to have stamina. So if you are running, your stamina decreases, then uh, that would also be used in variables. But since that's a little more complicated, I won't get into that right now. But maybe you want him to uh, have some health. So go into this and type in HP for health power equals 100 semicolon. Okay, now when you press uh, space, go into control and add another code, HP minus equals one semicolon. Okay, now we'll add in a step event like I told you earlier, it's a loop. So step and code if HP is below or equal to zero, then instance destroy. So that's what you type in. And what this does is if your HP is below or equal to zero, then it destroys the object. Okay, so click OK and click OK again. Add in another object. Okay, and uh, go to the draw event. And go to control and code draw text x plus zero by y plus zero quotation marks hp colon quotes plus string. Now here's the thing. I didn't add in global. So let's go ahead and add in global dot hp and two parentheses. Now all this does is it draws the text to the x and y uh, position of the object that you created. It draws some text hp and then it draws the player's variable hp. Let's go back to the character here and go into the create event and on the hp add in a global period before that. Global sets it up so the variable can be used to uh, by every object in the game. If you take out uh, global, let's say these don't have global. So if you try to call the speed from another object, then it won't work because it's not a global. It can't access that uh, variable. However, if it is a global variable, then it can access it. So go on ahead and uh, click OK. Click OK on these and go into room zero and add in a new object. Since it doesn't have a sprite, it's going to be a blue question mark with a red, or it's going to be a blue circle with a red quotation mark. But uh, you want it to be in the top right or anywhere you want the text to be on the screen. So click OK and run it again.
Okay, so that was an error. I uh, forgot to add in this. Go into the space uh, event and type in global period before the HP. And step event, add it in again. Now run it again. Also, to run your game, there is a hotkey. Just press F5. Okay, now you can see we have HP up there, and he can run, hold down space, and it starts to decrease. Okay, and when it gets to zero, he disappears. Here you could display a message saying game over, anything like that, and even restart the room if you wanted to. But um, that will be for another tutorial now. Now obviously this is a lot of code, so I, j I suggest you... Uh, maybe play through this uh, video multiple times or just write it down in GameMaker as I'm going through it and um, it's pretty much self-explanatory uh, I think I went over pretty much everything in this tutorial though but it's just a v they're very important though they're variables and you cannot create an advanced game without variables if you could it would be very complicated and you would be very limited to what you could do. So if you still don't fully understand them, you can maybe uh, look on the uh, Game Maker community. They should have plenty of tutorials for variables. Maybe uh, search Google for programming variables or something like that. I haven't tried that, so I don't know. Maybe even look in the manual. If, however, you don't want to do any of that stuff and you don't understand them, just comment the video and I will make a more in-depth tutorial on them and I realize that this is a lot of coding but it's very simple so uh, just take a look at it and you should get it but that's all for this tutorial and see you next time